this and we're coming back at you with yet another patch lock analysis. If you never watch one of these, good, because you are never getting back the three hours of your life that I'm going to be taking away from you. It's not just me, it's also Bruno as well as Toby Wan. We are the brains and the writers of this changelog. Literally. That's us. Yes, we actually wrote this changelog. We are Ice Rock, all three of us. Mm -hmm. so, I wish to claim I'm not Ice Rock because I disagree with some of the things in this patch log. Toby, it's I fine. It's the things that we too wrote. Yes. Yeah. So, like we're the old Shakespeare. Collectively, we're Ice Rock. Anyways, so uh, real fast, a couple of disclaimers. We are just talking about this patch log, like we're just reading off the text and just kind of uh, theory crafting on it. We have never played mm -hmm. a patch log, so a lot of, or some of the things that we say will be definitely incorrect. Uh, the second thing is, uh, my girlfriend's playing Dota in her room right now, or next to me. So we're gonna have random yelling, so apologize Hey for everybody, that. this guy has a girlfriend. Yeah, I know, I just snuck in there just to brag. And last thing, uh, Bruno and I also wrote a change log in April Fools, so I need Bruno to do a secret count on the background to see how many things we match up with this particular change log. Yeah. Are we good? Quite a few. Alright, we're good. Okay, so we're gonna just go down the list. I'm not gonna read it out, like each one of them. I'm gonna just say, hey guys, let's talk about Abaddon. Mm -hmm. We're gonna just say, let's talk about Abaddon and just let people read on the screen because I obviously have the patch log in front of us. So that will probably save us a bit of time. Are we yeah, good? Are you, um, are you starting with the heroes or are you actually thinking back? No, we're going to just go from pieces? top to bottom. We're going to start with general and then we're going to go down. Wonderful. Okay. So out of the entire general list of things that are changed, anything that comes to mind that you guys want to talk about? Um, the melee illusions thingy. Uh, it's a direct buff to Naga Siren. Okay. Just thinking about that. It's if you get the illusions um, on Naga Siren, it's 45 seconds. They last a long. I mean, you talk about the Rune of Destiny being the double damage on most heroes. Uh, I think late, late into the game, getting a Rune of Illusion on Naga Siren with Radiance and Six Loaded, it's actually as good. Wait, does this matter? Because I don't think this matters. Two more illusions. They're tanky. They can push. The the chance the chance of you really being able to utilize them though is going to be low. Like if you're going to the later portion of the game, the chances of you still having like a bottle so you could just try and siege with bonus illusions. You may have one mega wave, but I don't see it Yo, massively tell impacting Lemby. the game. Eternal Lemby doesn't sell his bottle until he really really has to. <laughs> yeah, Eternal Lemby can leave a courier uh, with a bottle on it, so he can carry it all the way in. Which then the courier holds his sixth item. Yeah, that could work. Yeah. Okay. No, that's all I had to say. Okay, so Wonderful. I think the, the more important thing is the attack speed one. Mm -hmm. So basically how it currently works before this patch is if you guys ever hit by a fiery spirit, your attack is like glacially slow even when the effect of the fiery spirit ends. Like you, you're, you're waving your sword and your attack never uh, gets off. Uh, yep. What it happens now after 6.81 patch is as soon as the effect of Fiery Spirit or Untouchable or any attack speed slow wears off, your regular attack speed register and you finish the rest of your attack animation. So obviously it's like, I don't want to say a stealth nerf, it's like a, actually a big direct nerf to a lot of heroes that um, slows your attack speed. Hopefully that made sense to everybody. So It's after... not exactly like that, but let's go with that. Is it not exactly like that? What is it like? No, no, your, your attack will be slow, but the thing is that if you cancel the attack, like, let's say you stop the attack, and you start again, you will still attack slow. That's the, pa the part that was fixed. Like, right now, what you have to do is you have to actually wait until your attack is finished to make sure that um, the next attack is fast. It's kind of similar to what you said, but it's not as strong of a change. Because the attack that starts slow will always finish slow. Okay, this attack ma this makes it so heavy attack speed slow don't linger into the next attack even after right. the duration has expired. Okay, I'm just leaving it out there. Okay, we're uh, good? Yeah, good, good. Well, I, I think we're going to extend that into the discussion of Enchantress uh, as well as... Hey, you have a girlfriend. <laughs> Rather obvious on the stream. It's a shame right. can't cause global silence. Abaddon, guys. Let's talk about Abaddon. I think you, Toby has so something you, to say about that. Yeah, I kind of actually want to jump back up to the gameplay bug fixes.
Because I think there's at least one thing in here which is going to change up something. Um, and that was clockwork. Because mm -hmm. they, they actually, um, it was something I saw quickly. I kind of want to find it again. Uh, oh, you're going way back up, like in the bug fixes, gameplay. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm actually back in the bug fixes for this guy. Um, and it was something to do with power cogs. You can't walk out of the power cogs anymore. Yeah, you, you're, um, you've it fixed not being able to walk out of the power cogs without being hit again. And it's, it's just a small thing I wanted to point out, but it was one of these things where like, you see heroes just sit inside the entire time and never go out. They've got to break like two different cogs, and even then they still get hit. So just a small thing I wanted to flag on the bug fixes. I don't know if you guys saw anything else. Like, like I know um, you can no longer do um, relocating skewers, or like you can't do Chen back skewers, no more fountain skewers. Even mm -hmm. though no one was really achieving it, uh, that has been patched out too. Yeah. I think the other thing that I saw from the Pixies was the Phoenix Blade Mail thing that I never actually saw anyone use it <laughs> I effectively. Never saw that but yeah, like it used to be that if you were like full HP and you Blade Mail and Supernova, if they kill the egg, they would kill you, but you'd do all your life in damage to whoever killed you. Mm. So that was a little bit stupid. There was also but. something else too about Tuscar with his snowball. Um, I didn't realize that Juggernaut's ulti wouldn't actually attack anybody who was being picked up inside the snowball. But now mm -hmm. that's actually been reworked. So the Juggernaut ulti would actually hit everybody inside the snowball. I would actually have an extended question on that. If you have a Battle Fury on Juggernaut and you're hitting everybody, does everybody cop the cleave? It's really weird because everyone that's in the snowball is removed from the game. So Yeah, so how does Juggernaut actually attack him? I and have no is idea. There any, is there any spill damage? And what happens if you die inside the snowball before the snowball hits their target? Does the you snowball just pop hit? out with, with eight dead corpses or the snowball goes red? I don't know, man. I, don't know. Uh, I am uh, actually very curious in terms of how the snowball works. Are you actually off the map? Are you invulnerable? Uh, Does you, were invulnerable. Know? you could dodge spells. You could yeah, dodge I know you could dodge spells, but why can you dodge spell? It's, it's... If you ask me in Dota 1, I'm pretty sure you were out of the map. Well, we are already two, I have no idea. like off topic now already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, anyways, so we'll, we'll talk about the snowball when we get to task because mm. snowball was one of those uh, things that got. I, I haven't even got down that far. There was one other thing too, which I know I flagged up to you too, Bruno, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, Rubik's telekinesis got reworked again. Yeah. Uh, around uh, the bottom runes. Now I know this is kind of like just throwing it out there, but because we don't know the positioning of it, but I'm pretty sure some people should get themselves inside the game and test to see where you can throw heroes still, because I think they've just reworked the cliffs again. Yeah. Back on um, track we go, boys. Abaddon. <laughs> so, hey, this was the track. We just we just started halfway down the track. Yeah. So but Toby, you have a strong feeling about this new change? Oh wait 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 wait! Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! No 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 no! I want I want to fix this because uh like we were talking bullshit. Uh, I just reread again. It's like it says fix Juggernaut Somni slash being able to hit units inside of Tusk Snowball. It used to do that. It ah. doesn't do that anymore. Right. Okay. Mystery then. Okay. Yeah. Now moving on. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. But what the fuck with Abaddon? It's now redirecting 35% of all damage dealt to nearby allied heroes. So you actually, like, when Abaddon, like, he's like the best support hero with an Aghanim Scepter because you can't attack any of his allies around him without copying all the damage yourself. And you heal, because that's what you do when you have all attack on. Yeah. Wait, so does uh, that mean he actually gets the heal from the damage his allies are taking? Course. As well as reflecting 35% of all the damage? No, not reflect. Oh, it redirects, redirects the damage. Yeah. You absorb right, so you, the damage. So it's like, you know Coco Ram? Yeah, right. you know like Coco Ram? It makes 50% of the damage being dealt by the end. Uh, oh. So this makes everyone 35% more tanky, but instead of dealing the damage at the end, it deals damage to you, which in fact heals you instead of dealing damage. So for 6, 7, 8 seconds, your whole team is much more durable, which is pretty good, assuming you can get an Acceptor and a Vadon. But hey, I mean, if mm. heroes like Ancient Operation and getting an Axe Scepter, mm. I think Avadon can do it. Well, here's the thing, wondering. though. Here's yeah. the thing, though. Like, for example, the most common support that we're getting Axe Scepter nowadays is Visage and AA. And yep. I feel that Range Heroes has an easier chance split pushing or farming. The birds split push, so the, the Visage gets a lot of farm. 
And then AA is pretty bad. Well, at the same time, AA doesn't have to be there at the fight to help out the fight. So it's pretty convenient to leave him across the map and split push and then still mm -hmm. contribute with the Ice Blast. A battle, you kind of have to be in the middle of things. And you're probably going to be dying more. And do you really want to spend 4k go? It sounds like a really high upside, but... You know, do you want to throw 4k into this? I think it. I think it's worth it. I think Abaddon's going to join the rank of those supports that farm an Axe Scepter. Uh, but in terms of how much priority you want to give to him, do you want to give him 5 minutes of free farm? Is that worth it? It seems like it is. I would say it is. I mean, not kind of like... I, I feel like Ancient Apparition has to go for an Axe Scepter. There's no other thing you want to go for. Like, you want to go, like, brown boots into Axe Scepter pretty much. With Abaddon, you have certain alternatives, but it's one of those heroes that you can still go the build you go now, uh, just like go mech or go whatever small item that your team needs. But let's say it's like 10, 12 minutes into the game, and you're like 2-0 and 3, and things are looking go good, you just go and buy an Acceptor. Go for it. Yeah, I think at, at the worst, like if you don't finish your Acceptor, you get a point booster, right? It's still really good yep. for Abaddon, because he needs both of the HP and mana. And uh, the other thing is that it's 35% of all damage so I It's actually more than 35% because the damage you're taking is after the effects of armor reduction as well as magical resist. So you're just yeah. basically giving you more above that. So it's actually a mm -hmm. lot higher. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I like this. Okay, so we, we talked about the scenario of support Abaddon. What about the times where we see, like, for example, Loda go carry Abaddon? It used to be a joke where you just go like, hey guys, Mask of Madness, Basher, Abyssal. But what if I play legit one row of Baden and farm Axe? Is that a doable thing? And make your tank um, thank you? I, I, would, I, I, I could see it happen in the later portion of the game, where at, like Aghanims becomes a luxury base-breaking item when things get really rough, or like you hit that 40-45 minute mark, where you try and breach the, the, breach the high ground, and you don't 100% know how to get up there. I can see it working in that role, but I just don't know how you try and work an, an Aghanim Scepter into a build for a carry Abaddon. Uh, you go Midas, I mean, Ab Midas, and then you go to Axe Scepter, easy. Axe, and then you're not a carry, you're like, okay, here's the thing, I see... Like, you got Frostmourne, the attack speed is there! EG can do it. Like, you get our TC a hero like Shadowfiend or like a real carry in the mid position, and then you can safely enter Abaddon. And you can get an Abaddon carry, like in a two position safe lane. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you're, you're, but you're then just saying you need another core to back you up. Exactly. But if you put a puck mid and your carry is Abaddon, well, you hope you win by 20 minutes, otherwise you're not going to win. <laughs> Have a time where it lets you win by 20 minutes, unless you win <laughs> every other lane, at which point it won't really matter if you're running an Abaddon or not. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm trying to, to make the point there. But I, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to see. At least I'm going to try it in pubs. See what happens. Like my one pub a month, it's going to be in a bottom pub. Okay. Mm. Uh, a chilling touch attack speed slow. So Bruno, you were talking about this. It's not actually five percent slow. It's more than that. No, it's more than that. Um, I mean, think about this. Like, if your attack speed is four hundred percent, like taking five percent is negligible. But if it's a hundred percent, which is like your starting attack speed taking 5% means much more. When you go to the negatives, every 5% counts more and more. Like until the final, like let's say you go from 5% attack speed to 0% attack speed, that's like an infinitely less amount of damage. So what's here, it's not like around 5%, it's more closer to 10% actually, uh, in terms of like the DPS you can deal. Uh, which won't change much in a laning situation because you'll still like drop your attack, which is what you have to do. But it will make a difference in these uh, level one fights when you get like five people with uh, chilling touch and attacking. Well, then you have 10% less DPS, which is not much, but I think ancient operation kind of deserves it. The other thing to work to, I guess, look at it a different way is the fact that. Um... You nerfed the chilling touch in the early game and not necessarily touching it much in the later game. In, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So unless you're a support, a lot of the concern here for a lot of pro players when they talk about A is like it basically gives you free level one invade to the enemy jungle, especially. Uh, well, they talk about that with AA as well as Luna, because mm -hmm. you put chilling touch and the team against you literally can't fight. 
So what yeah. that means is it allows you to just ward the enemy jungle without too much fear and let you do things like aggressive trialing. So that kind of stuff is somewhat nerfed. And the rest of the hero doesn't see much change. And yeah. I, I think the rest of the hero is actually just fine. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's good. Toby doesn't uh, care about A. No, I, I look at the change and still think that level 1 fights are still going to happen. Okay. Like, no matter what. It's just a little bit more nerf, so you have to be slightly more defensive, but they'll still have a ticket to go in. I'm actually reading the chat, and there's a guy called Philip Vo who actually wants to take us back to Abaddon, and I kind of want to go with him on this one, because he asked how the interaction would work with Abaddon's Agadim Scepter and a Blade Mail. Would that technically reflect the damage? I have no answer to that. Huh. I don't know. Okay, here's an, a simpler question. If you pop Blade Mail when you're getting hit on Borrowed Time, do you reflect that damage? I think you, you do. do. Right? You do. In oh that shit, case, so, guys. So Holy technically, shit. Technically, this would break everything. If that works that way, then... Yeah. Like, you just pop your Blade Mail and everyone is taking a lot of damage. Uh -huh. Which... Okay, hold on. Even before you pop the blade mail, like when a bad and ult with the axe after on, what's the natural reaction for the enemy team? They just get the fuck don't out, fight. right? <laughs> right, right. Just you like, can't don't fight. Engage. I mean, I guess you but, can but, fight. But, but what? What now? Okay, throw this one out there. What if you have axe on the front lines? <laughs> okay, so anti mage. Uh, I don't think we need to talk too much about that, right? That's cool. Yeah, no, it's good. Like. <clears throat> Huge area of effect getting huger. Alright, cool. That's <laughs> and then Axe getting PRD. PRD, what does PRD do, Bruno? For the... Uh, for the uninitiated, PRD makes it so that it's less common to get five spins in a row and then ten minutes without spins. The spins should be more separated, like, evenly, in general. Like, you can still have two, three, four, five in a row, but it's much, much more unlikely. And it's very likely that you'll see more, like, kind of, like, hit, hit, spin, hit, hit, spin, or something more regular. So this makes Axe life more reliable, like jungling gets not easier, but at least you won't be raging because you died for no spins so often. Okay, so I'm okay totally with, for example, Ogre Magi not using PRD, because you know, mm -hmm. you, you gotta go for the, go big or go home. And Axe as a very manly hero, Fuck the PRD. I, I don't know why we, we use this. Like you just you just go in that fight and believe you're gonna spin twenty five times to become a spin lord. This is like the worst change of the patch look. Like I'm almost really? done just yeah, I, after I read two here, I was like, I'm done. It's, it's, at this, it's at this point I wanna give a shout out to a guy at Valve who shall remain unnamed who yes. loves this hero and loves this change. Cause he's sitting there going, Hey, Axe is now gonna be reliable. Nah, like fuck it's, reliable. No, it's no longer a possible chance, it's a, he gets in there, and he's got this amount of chance, and you know he's gonna spin sometime. Yeah, I mean, you get... It's not really a big deal. You lose burst. Burst is good enough. Yeah. Just saying. Alright. Okay, so, uh, Batrider, basically, this change takes him back pre-dagger nerf. Yeah. Uh, with the mana costing. And essentially, like, yeah, sure, Batrider needs a lot of mana, and he's always mana starved. But, Batrider was picked regardless of the Blink Dagger buff, and I think he will still be picked, so... Pretty much a move yeah. point. Mm. The only thing I read, yeah, the only thing I read from this is that that Rider was one of the, or is one of the most reliable Lycan like counters. So... Every time you nerf Bat Rider, you make Lycan a little bit stronger. So is he really a reliable Bat Rider, or Lycan like counter, do you think so? Ask DK. Remember, EG picks Lycan, they go Bat Rider and Chantress in the first two picks, and Chantress is build a Necro, and Bat no, Rider. No, Bruno, you, you can't just be like, hey, the best team in the world uses this hero to counter another hero in two games, so suddenly he's a counter <laughs> when 45 other teams are trying Bat Rider against Lycan, and it doesn't work. Their team's fault. Okay, like, not the hero's like fault. The I see. Yeah, unbelievable. Okay. Why are you saying that our TZ is Lycan is shit? Is that what you're saying? I, I don't even know how we got there, but okay, yeah. yes. RTZ like and mm. shit. Moving on. Okay. Uh, Beastmaster gets space for damage. Cool. Great. Alright, Bloodseeker. What? It's Master Myth. Well, I mean, it's nice to have four blaze damage, but you think teams are gonna pick him now because 
It has four no. base damage. Or teams no. is gonna pick him based on the aura and the stun that like that stuff that he already gave. So I, I don't think this will really change anything. And how many okay. people are running aura strats or even picking Beastmaster for an aura right now? It's like it feels like it's like one in every twenty game or something like that. I you, that actually feels more than what I feel with a Beastmaster. Well, no, no, no. The thing is, they they run aura strat, but they don't use Beastmaster. They use like Doom yeah. and Venge and other stuff. So yeah, yeah. They just bring on the Lunar Vengeful combination. You don't need to get a Beastmaster and soak up your mid. Yeah. No. Okay. okay. So, ding ding ding, uh, this is the first match yep. we had from our first patch match. lock to this patch lock. Uh, we said that you need to increase or better cast point on Blood Rage. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Blood Rage no longer be dispelled, I assume. Yeah, BKB or Manta will not remove silence, which is actually a pretty huge deal. Yep. For both you and for enemies. It means you can Blood Rage pop BKB and you'll have lots of damage. Um, it also means, like, I think the. Op the other way around is a little bit harder because I mean if you're gonna do this to a carry you're giving them a lot of damage you probably don't want to do that and if you're going to do this to a support unlikely that support has Manta or BKB so... I, I think when people talk about a spell like Blood Rage where it's like a double-edged sword they mm -hmm. always say like oh but it gives them a lot of damage it's like talking about how Mask of Manus gets you kill a lot of times it's it's you you could only you will only be punished if you make a mistake. That's the way I see it. So if you blood rage an enemy carry, and he just kills you because you didn't stun him afterwards, like that's your fault. I think this is just a direct buff. And yeah, sure, blood rage has its shortcomings from time to time, but mm -hmm. the, yeah, it's just a it's really a lot straight of damage, up buff. Though. It's a lot of that. Yeah, whatever. You stun him, and he's not attacking anymore. You can't stun him if he BKBs. I guess so. Unless you pick Beastmaster. Oh. So, uh. <laughs> is, is Bloodseeker going to be picked though? I, I don't think so. I think we need like another two or three more buffs on him. You, you've got a guy that ignores the, the rules of speed, and he now ignores the rules of immunity. Why wouldn't you pick him? Is this, he's is this Melk talking right now, or is this Toby this, talking? This is, this is Melk's influence on me, definitely talking. Okay. Um, he has made me a believer in Bloodseeker. Like a, a real believer in Bloodseeker. All we need is OD to come back and Bloodseeker 100% picked up in every game. Well, here's the thing though. Weaver is a, f or was a fairly commonly picked, and Bloodseeker is heralded as the best Weaver counter, also just Slark never counter. picked. Also Slark counter, and Slark is kind of picked, Yeah. and Bloodseeker is never picked. Actually, so... Blood Rage no longer dispelled, does time lapse count as dispelling it? Well, actually, you can't time lapse, because you're silence! You're silence! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> No, I'm, I'm not sold. But if he is picked, that would be really fun, because I think he's a really fun hero to play uh, and, and see in the game. So. Yeah, looking forward to it. I'm cool. still thinking 683 is the patch of Blood Seeker, but we'll see. So, Bounty Hunter getting buffed, great. Cool. Yeah. Brewmaster, does this sound cool to anybody? For those of you guys that have oh. read it. It's, it, think... sound, it sounds weird. Is like wait, you're gonna want to wait ten seconds before you initiate. Like that's probably no, no, gonna no, no, happen no, no, no. when Brewmaster rotates out. Okay, okay. Here's the thing, Toby. Brewmaster offlane. You stay away. Like just like try to be in experience range. If mm. a support comes and harasses you, first attack misses. You punch him really hard in the first attack. Then that support can't trade anymore. And then you just go back, wait ten seconds, come back in experience range. Support comes to harass you. Boom. I think it's kind of like that. I don't think this is useful in mid, or like in any other way. But offlane brewmaster, where you're not going to be hitting creeps, you just won the levels, and supports are going to try and poke you, feels like kind of like centaur return kind of deal. Where okay, the support is losing the trade naturally just because you have a return. I think drunken brother will give brewmaster that kind of thing. Mm. I'm not so on the offlane, but uh, I mean on the mid lane, you basically just get a free crit every 10 seconds. Which gets you a last hit. But I think it yep. means more once you can pick up the Acceptor. So you're, when your Fire Spirit gets the same passive. Because to me, Brewmaster, when you ult, you just want to do a lot in that ult. And giving you a slight burst damage. Don't they... Yeah, the Fire Spirit just move at max movement speed. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you just want to hit hard and hit fast and disab but, disable half the team. So it just but helps that's with the that. Fire, does the Fire Spirit actually have these... 
yes. passive thing up yeah. as soon as he pops? Or does he have to wait 10 seconds and then... Well, he's the 10 second with a new unit, right? I assume that's how it works. It would not make sense if... If it was instant when you pop down. If, if that was the case, that'd be a nice little combo. No, I, I, I thought that would... That's how I read it as. I'm not sure. Is this, if you have not attacked for 10 seconds, I suppose when the... No, no, the unit would still have to have a countdown from the spawn time. Like, when it gets created, it would still have to count another 10 seconds before it would work. Oh, I see. But that would make it almost not even wanting to use it during, like, it would, it would be a nothing thing during the It would be a non-factor. Yeah. So it, it has to be from the very, very start. If they're going to make this change, they've got to have it from the very start. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, one it, of the things to test. Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I'm also going to reference a magic cast early tonight when I saw Smile try and run a Brewmaster offlane. Yeah, I and saw that. I'm just going to tell you right now. Getting a Brewmaster offlane to get just experience and to stay in experience range doesn't do jack all. Like, Centaur at least gets a Centaur ulti, so he's able to run in and then use his abilities. But Brewmaster needs to farm a Blink Dagger, and then you're talking about like an Aghanim's upgrade as well. You want to get all of this money on a Brewmaster, it takes too long. You never, you're never able to get it in the offlane. So, if this is even going to happen, it's going to be a safe lane Brewmaster or mid solo Brewmaster. I don't see this hero working offlane. Agreed. In which, yeah, in which case then it doesn't mean much because in both those situations you will be attacking and getting attacked, kind of often. Come on, guys in the chat, give me a Toby one face palm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, attacking so everything I say. somewhat uh, reworked. Well, not reworked, but like just slightly nerfed. <laughs> but he's not really even pick anymore, right? So. Don't really no, care. Not doing very well, but well, they they changed up something recently too. Like um, they actually changed his bristleback. This was in one of the, in one of the uh, bug changes they had, where his um his bristleback was deactivated when he was hexed. Now, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong if I if I misread this or not, um, but I believe now that doesn't happen. I remember reading something similar, but I wasn't sure if it's bristleback. Or not. Uh, here it we seems go. like it's, it was um, bristleback. F fixed hex disabling bristlebacks um. Bristleback passive ability. That's huge, actually. So that it no, it no longer it no longer disables his bristleback. So as long as he keeps the back of the chicken to the he, to the heroes attacking him, he should be okay. Oh, that's right. A lot of times, I think when bristleback was commonly picked, you would pick a lot of support lines to deal specifically with that or support shadow shaman. Mhm. Mm uh, yeah. But but now that now that's no longer going to have any kind of effect. But it seems like teams have not picked up on that, or at least they're not picking him at all. I don't know, like, when you pick Bristleback offlane, he's not an offlane like a center clock Batrider that gives you initiation. So, I just don't think he's really in for the meta, at, at least at the moment. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Broodmother. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does anybody care about Broodmother? I actually do. I because... hate Broodmother. No, okay, I, take I, it I, away, I... Bruno. Okay, great. Uh, the Poison Sting damage per second, nice to have. Doesn't mean much. An Insatiable Hunger Life Steal, 20% more at each level. That's good. Uh, Spinweb was a big problem with uh, Broodmother. Like, when they changed it, it went from super OP to super useless. And this is actually a change that lots of people were suggesting. Like, I saw this on Reddit many times. I saw this on, like, even people suggesting it on Twitter. Um, so, Spinweb, the free passing now works kind of like a blink dagger. If you don't take damage for three seconds, you can move whatever you want. And that's actually really good. Uh, I think it it kind of makes the hero not super OP, but fair. Like, it even means that if someone pops the dust, you still have some time to react and go to the trees and try to run away. If there's AoE, then you're kind of screwed, no matter if they have vision or not. So they can just try to nuke the general area where you are, then pop a sentry, try to find you. Um, I actually think that this will stabilize Broodmother to a point where she's not ridiculously good, but at least fun to play in pubs and not horribly to play again. Hello? Hi Bruno, we're still here. Yeah, that's I'm, it. That's all I have to say. I, I actually like the change. I like the change as far as her pathing goes, because her free pathing was broken. You, you're 100% right on all of that. I mm -hmm. just don't understand why they had to increase her insatiable hunger. Why did that have to get buffed? I think, I mean, it's... Alright guys, so Centaur? Right? Are we still on Broodmother? 
No, but I'm better. Oh, you, you <laughs> went away. Okay. Where'd you go? Where'd you go, Louie? Uh, I was just lost in the interesting discussion. Continue, though. I'm brute mother. No, no, no. I, I, I was telling Toby, this is not an increase in damage, right? It's just increase in life still, which is mm. sustainability. If you yeah. tell me that brute mother is a sustainable hero, I would say, uh, what universe are you? I think brute mother being kind of squishy at Sheath. Increasing her survivability and not giving her more damage makes her a little bit more fair. I, I don't think it's terrible. I like see the life seal only more damage. Then I would complain. Yeah, I see the life seal only really mattering during like that mid game team fight. Brute mother mm -hmm. either gets ganged by four heroes and dies, yep. or she kills a support by herself regardless of the life seal. So right. I think it, this will only matter in like, hey, I'm right clicking your team, but I'm also under focus fire. And that 20% might actually help there, especially when you have BKB. So, mm -hmm. But hey, she's on CM, so nobody cares! Nobody cares. Centaur, yay! Goose Stomp now costs a ton. Uh, good nerf. Who was it that did the uh, Max Hoof Stomp? Lumi? Migo. You remember that. Migo. The yeah. From MOM. It doesn't really make any difference, though. Yes, because. Okay, here's the difference. I actually checked this um, in this last. 15 minutes, of course. Um, the, with 85 mana, you can hoofstomp two times at level one without popping a clarity. 130, you only have one hoofstomp. So what this means is, if you're level one in the offlane and you get pressure and forced to hoofstomp to run away, then you have to be super passive until you get 130 mana again, which I think is big. Or you get clarity and you yeah. have to play passive anyway. I think he just weakened his laning somewhat, but also during the late game, you know how Centaur survives for such a long time, he would just like keep linking into Hoof Stomp. Mm -hmm. At a point, he would just run out of mana. So maybe teams or players need to get a magic stick on him more. But I'm not even sure matter. people are, are buying magic sticks on him. Wait, late game, it doesn't matter. It costs the same. Ah, oh, you're right. You're right. I guess more from the mid game. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. But. Mm. So, uh, Chaos Knight, what are we, PL now, or...? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. We add another random generator into the game. I mean, he's a yeah. Chaos Knight. He's the man of the random generator, right? So it makes sense on him. He doesn't use PRD. He doesn't live in PRD, right? I don't know. Does he? I don't know. I no, don't he, he he's also another hero that you cannot put a PRD on. Like, you just have no, to. No, no, no. Just no. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. How, like... how, how about your illusion buff up on this one? Your illusion rune with an extra phantasm, send him down. Yes, no. this one matters. Holy shit. Yep. Not good, not so much. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice buff. Yep. No. Still won't get picked. Yeah. Chen. <laughs> yeah, great, nothing. Great buff, but fucking useless. Exactly. Wonderful. Chen buffed, or nerfed, buffed. It no, doesn't buff, matter, buff. he still get picked. I didn't even know what it says, he's just like, not a big change. He'll, he'll I, get I kind of feel conflicted, because this is a buff, and Chen is pretty strong. Yeah. But Penitent sucks, so I like... So it's not even a buff! <laughs> no, one, no one levels this thing anymore, right? So, I like to see... I want to see, like, Max Penitent's level 7 Jagon Chen. I like how we said, or at least how I said at the beginning of this patch log, like, oh, the three of us wrote this, we're very proud of our work! <laughs> and through every line, we're like, oh, this change sucks. Let's just move on. <laughs> yeah. Well, with that, let's move on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Kling, Steph, pack cooldown. Doesn't matter, boys. This change sucks. <laughs> no, actually, this actually matters. And I'm going to go at it again. Because if you check the duration on oh, Steph pack, it's slightly less than 45 seconds. I'm checking right now because I have a bad memory for this. Uh, but this means that you can have it perma all the time. So it lasts 35 seconds. Hold and on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why is the chat saying C9 for TI4? Is the new invites out? What? No, what? No. No, ignore the chat. They're baiting you into saying things. <laughs> Apparently C9 confirmed to TI4 pendant is in the game files. Uh, is what they're saying. Uh, well, no, pendant is in the game files. It doesn't mean anything. I think drop my words and then... So... Okay. Like, I've seen teams getting pennant. Yeah, it's sitting on number 6. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Right right. Also, Dream League Invoker said have a loading screen. It's totally 
Ember totally false the then. Yeah. Because there's no way that the Dream League screens thingies. I, I, I think that should be classed as misleading. Okay. Yes. Yes, there's yeah. no way the invoker set is. Okay, so death pack cooldown <laughs> reduce, is that a misleading? No, 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 I told you, like, death pack lasts 35 seconds. With this, you can have 100% uptime at level 16. Yeah, Which but the chance of matters. always having a creep next to you the entire time. That's actually kind of the other thing? You don't have a creep next to you to eat all what the time? What you have a UI 2000 getting your creeps with his chance? <laughs> Which Clint's now, now has a better a with a dominator, So he has his own unit he can sacrifice. I mean, I don't like being clinks and not having death pack just when you need it. It's a buff. I mean, it, let's not it's... say it's the biggest buff <laughs> in the world, but it kind of makes sense. I, I, I think we need a, uh, it's a nothing buff, stamp move on. Agreed. Yeah. Dazzle, mm -hmm. poison touch. It no longer mini suns. Good. Well, you can't, tip, you can't avoid TPs anymore at Dazzle, so he became Bloodseeker now. Well, honestly, it's, it's still, that hero It's still the same at level 4, though. It's just crazy at level 1, and that's been yeah. buffed down, not nerfed no, down. You can't stop TPs at level 4, either, because it takes 3 seconds to... Actually, prop the stun. So unless he's TPing to a structure that someone else was TPing, he will always TP before you stun. True, mm. but you can't eat a poison stun, poison, and be like, "Oh shit, I'm TP out." Oh shit, I'm TP. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but um, honestly, I think that hero so picked and so calmly picked that he deserves a, a nerf. A nerf? And, yeah. Yeah, and being able to TP away is is fine. Yeah, Good. He did get also cancelling axes stuff. in the field. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. also cancelling black holes. It's also <laughs> it took me a second there, Bruno. Okay, okay. Yeah. Alright, Disruptor, great. Cool. cool. Doom! Sweet. Damage yeah. no longer is ignore magic shield. So, pipe as well as, I uh, guess, the Ember Spirit, flame, guard. flame guard and other stuff. I don't know. Like, Doom is like, hey okay, man, I'm gonna pierce through every shield. I am penetration. Like, that's, that's what it is. Now it's not anymore. I don't know. So Doom counters everything except pipe. Yeah, except magic, which like, what? <laughs> <laughs> now all you need to do is build an Aghanim Scepter so he actually does enough damage with the Doom to make it justifiable. Yeah. In, the, in the later portion of the game and not just the mid game. I guess. Does it matter though this change? Like, sure he's no. gonna miss one or two kills, but he's picked for the silence, he's picked for the tanky frame as well as the aura. That's so. a, uh, it's a nothing buff! Move yeah, on. or nerf, yeah. Troll, gust range, don't matter. Earth no, spirit. It does. Okay, it does, trust okay. me. Okay, like, okay. One sentence. This actually is slower than Ghost Scepter right now. Ghost Scepter is 0.3, this is 0.5, so it's almost like double the duration. Of, sorry, not Ghost Scepter, 4 staff. It's double the duration of a 4 staff push, meaning that this is good because it's. 0.3 more seconds of a hero disabled, and it's 0.3 more seconds that you have to run away if you're being chased, and it's 0.3 more seconds of just people moving if you want people to move into a certain position to land a stun, or something else. Well, no, 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 uh, no. Wait, does it take you longer to push them back? Or yes. Are you saying it pushed them back further? No, slower. Slower. Yes. Yeah, so... It doesn't matter, well, no, is it, what you're saying. It, it kind of feels like, right now, it's kind of like Greater Rush. Weak. But it's like, oh, I'm going back. Okay. Can, can yeah. you can you do anything during the gust knockback? Oh, like, it, so I'm I'm assuming you can't move off to a side. You won't be able to cast any abilities because you're instantly silenced. It's so, mostly about just. Um, I mean, you still have 0.3 more seconds, but it's mostly I think to set up stuff. It's like those 0.2 seconds. Oh, the enemy moved. Let's say you have something like a Lestrak or a Lina around. It's a little bit more time to react to properly understand or something like that. Oh, not a big buff. Strow range should be picked even with this, even with this buff. Like she's still amazing. So, yes, I, totally. Yes, she's beautiful. She, yes. Good. We agree. Earth spirit doesn't matter. Not in CM. Ding ding ding. Wait. Ding 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 ding. Wait. What? Another change that we said should happen. So two so far now. By the way, Toby, I'm not sure if you, you get what we're saying, but we wrote a patch lock before... Yeah, I, I, I understand it. I, okay. I read the entire thing during April Fool's, because I knew if Bruno wrote it, half of it would be in a change lock. Except, <laughs> Bruno didn't write anything. It was just... Other but people. I'm alive soon anyway, okay. so... 
That's, I'm I just going to take fifth. all the credit. I plead the fifth. Okay. Earthshaker, so this is where I'm going to like get really mad. Yeah, me too. So, but I'll, I'm going to let you be mad. Okay, so basically the Earthshaker change is so to, to make sure those freaking C9 tryhards, which by the way, yeah. just because they have a pennant doesn't mean they're TI4. Um, so they don't get to block the Radiant mid lane, so they could pull the creeps into the Ancients as well as into the, the medium big camp. But this means now everybody gets to block the starting creeps or ex whatever creep wave they want for 8 seconds. You know what that means? That means if you block your off lanes, the enemy safe lane is literally a long lane now. You have two safe lanes is the way I see this. What the yes. fuck? Not you could that. make Earthshaker off lane by himself and he will win the lane. Yes. What the fuck? Not only that. Not only that. Let's say you go mid, just like not not shaking me. You just like walk to mid when the creeps spawn. You pop that, and then you just pull the enemy wave between tier one and tier two, and you deny the whole wave there because they will meet your wave between tier one and tier two, and you can just farm the creeps there, deny yours. What's the enemy gonna do? Like at least with ancients, you can ward the ancients, and bam, stopped. Or you have to invest like they have to invest a sentry. With this, how do you counter Fisher like that? How do you even do? Blasuka like, silence. What's up, <laughs> level one? <laughs> but you have to go like between tier one and tier two, or even worse, like tier two, tier three. I really dislike this. Dota two, literally dead game. Literally dead game. Literally. Two safe lanes. Are you kidding me? Two safe lanes? What is this League of Legend? No way. It looks like you're We're done. Ha how yeah, long until tournament organizers question. take matters into their own hands and just auto-ban Earthshaker? Yeah, you know what? I always thought that's dumb. Like, you know how, like, some tournaments you can buy more than two Necrobooks? That was the old rule. Yeah. And then, like, you yeah. can't buy more than two Hexes? That was so dumb. And then there's tournaments saying you can't Earthshaker, Fissure Block. Like, I, I just think that the game should balance itself and you could use anything in the game. But now with this, like, I'm attempt to say that. But I'm just being really, really paranoid. We'll see if the teams do take advantage of this. I would, I, okay, I, so here's the thing. Two patches ago, um, there was this change that the dragons had flying movement, remember? Like the ancient dragons? Yeah. Uh, that was like two patches ago. And then you changed it back. I immediately went into a test while in a stream, and I pulled the mid creep wave into the spawn. And I'm like, this is stupid, this shouldn't happen. And well, here's the thing, though. The deck, With a dragon the spawn, it's like a 25% or 20% or 25% spawn chance for the camp, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just at least up to chance. You brought up the good point of, hey, if C9 is doing that, you know, try hard strat, you could at least ward the ancients or do something about this. You can't yeah. do anything about this. Nope. You can ban or shaker, I guess. <laughs> Literally dead game. All right, uh, Elder Titan. <laughs> mm hmm. Small buffs. Cool. Cool. Echo mm -hmm. Tom sucks. Anything, Toby? No? I got nothing on this All one, right, man. Okay. Alright, Ember Spirit. Everybody's favorite hero, boys. Um, <laughs> Toby? <laughs> I, I just look at this and say, early on, thank god, no more two second stuns with a level one searing chain. Um, but at the same time, the second you hit a second level is okay. The slide of fist bonus damage, at least it's a nice nerf, and we take 40 extra damage away uh, in the later portion of the game. But he's still going to pose exactly the same threat. It's just a little bit more nerfed. I, I got a feeling you might slip out of the first two bands, but he's still going to get picked up a hell of a lot. So, uh, real fast, real fast, do we agree that Ember Spirit needs a nerf based on its yes. like recent... I just, uh, not just, but I recently checked the, the win rate for Ember Spirit. It's 51%. Mm-hmm. Is an OP hero really a 51% hero win rate? It's uh, not about... Is this from pub games or is this from competitive games? Uh, that Dota, so competitive games. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't think that you have to look at it in terms of, oh, 51%, then it's not that strong. Because what's happening here is that you're, like, mixing cost and consequence. What's happening right now is that because a hero is strong, Everyone first pick it, and because everyone first picks it, good teams might be like, okay, 
we're playing against a weaker team, which we're supposed to win anyway. The weaker team picks Ember Spirit because it's a strong hero. Strong team wins anyway. Like that the hero is strong doesn't mean that Monomaniacs are going to beat DK as much as I would like them to. So you will see that a hero eventually, when he gets very popular and OP, it goes back to that 50%, 55% rate. Um, I still think that Ember Spirit is super strong, but I don't think this actually changes what he's super strong at, which is sieging and defending. And, it, yeah. and it's fine. Like, it's fine. Sometimes uh, the way things work in this game is that you make the weakner, the weakest, the weakness is weaker, and you leave the strong thing strong. So Ember Spirit, right now, uh, when we talked about that in the fake changelog, we said let uh, that Slide of Fist doesn't hit heroes on Fog of War. And that would nerf his strong thing. Right now, you can go and see Gervais just by popping Slide of Fist up, uh, uphill, and you can do damage without ever being in danger. That still is there. That thing is good. You'll deal a little bit less damage, but 40 damage, it doesn't matter much when you get into that late game. Even if you have a crit, the damage from your Battle Furies and everything else will outweigh the 40 minus damage. So his late game, his potential to sieging and to defend from sieging is still strong. I only think that from this, I would max Searing Chains now instead of Flight of Fist at level 7. Okay, uh, the Slide of Fist nerf also damage. Keep in mind that the damage is halved when it hits the yep. Creep Wave, so, you know, you can't chop down Creep Wave as easily. Although I don't think that really matters. No, that doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I, before I thought, oh, Ember Spirit needed really heavy nerf, and then I was like, honestly, I don't think that he's that broken. Like, he, he's dealable. Mm. Yeah, yeah it's okay. I, I'm, I'm sure that is left to be debated, um, but we'll, we'll see how, how it's changed. Mm -hmm. Cool. Enchantress. Untouchable. Great. Good. Yeah, it kind of yeah. out offset the change that we saw in the general section. Okay. So, and yeah, Nick you Mom? can... Okay. Sorry, Being did we close... want to talk about Untouchable? No, I was saying that it kind of offsets the, the, the change from the yes. general section. Yes. So, it's like, oh, this is nerf. This fix is mostly towards Fire Spirit now. Because the other hero that had the same problem was Enchantress, but since Enchantress got buffed, it doesn't matter to her. I wonder when we'll ever see Enchantress mid lane, or you know, like actual lane Enchantress. It's actually really good. It's well, like when, they, when they increase her strength gain, maybe. I don't know. Maybe when gods actually do his cosplay. Anyways, Enigma is going on. Uh, never gonna post. happen. Yeah, exactly. So we're never gonna see me Enchantress. So, did you already know that Enigma's Midnight Pulse has, like, literally a building range? Like, literally. Now it just yep. gets even a bigger one. Good. It, it has a billion range, and now it's, like, one screen wide. So, pretty good. Yes. Good. Stuff. Right, Faces Void. Basis usually increase. Turn rate improved. So You, you know the turn rate thing? It's yes. because it was so annoying to turn in Chronosphere. Like, I know! You, were... you, you stand in there for, like, a second, and then you go <laughs> zoom! <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Calm down. Uh, you know, if I was Ice Rogue, which I would you're be not, buffing, if I was Ice Rogue, I would be buffing Faceless Void so that my eventual duel against James, Windrunner versus Faceless Void, is a little bit more fair to him. Okay. Just saying. That would never, never happen, right? Mm. Mm. Okay. I'm, apparently now I'm really loud. I guess my mic actually kicked in, so I moved my mic away now. I'm sorry. Just let me know how the audio goes. Okay, so uh, gyrocopter. Yeah. Sorry. Do we want to talk more about faces void or? No. Okay. No. Gyrocopter. Was homing missile ever a thing? Well, that's the question, right? Or does it become be... a thing? It was um... a thing for about a week when it became like a lane harasser and then it stopped being a thing when people realized they could get it out of support heroes. I think if you go gyro mid, you max home and missile. But no one goes gyro mid. It's, it's only really going to be massively effective if you're going up against heroes like Weaver or things like that, but if you're in that, you're in an aggro tri-lane anyway. Like, yep. 
you're going to be battling up against an Invis here to really make that worthwhile. It's another reason not to pick Bounty Hunter. Poor Bounty. But, no, I mean, think about this, like, really, if you go into the mid lane, right, you go homing missile and you go flat cannon. So, you throw a homing missile from your cliff and you go next to the creep wave and you start flat cannoning. Your enemy has to choose whether he stays there and takes the damage from the flat cannon and gets stunned from the uh, missile next to you, or he has to run away close to his tower and take full damage. In that case, 440 damage level 7, he's not going to hit him 5 times. So that homing missile is indestructible. And remember, tower deals a fourth of the damage, so towers would need like 20 hits to destroy that homing missile. It won't happen. I mean, if someone was to run Gyrocopter Myth, which I don't think is going to happen even with this buff, that person would max homing missile. Yeah, the only person in the scene who would possibly do that is Fader. What about Arteezy? Or Eternal Envy? Like, isn't this like a farmer myth? Kind of yeah, thing okay. they like? Should I rephrase it for you? The only person I've ever, ever seen that do in the Dota 2 scene is Fader. Okay, good. Did it work? Just wondering. No, he never used Missile, he just used Flat Cannon and Rocket Barrage. Okay. <laughs> Damn. But he's the only one that's ever run Jaro mid. <laughs> Bad, I guess. So, I mean, everybody just wanted to talk about Huskar because it's the second coming of Jesus. Yep. Huskar viable now. So, you actually can run Lifesteal on him while burning Spearing. I think that's the more important thing. Which, does that actually matter? Um. Okay, let's put it this way uh, Mask of Death is like 10% Lifesteal. Okay. If you do 150 damage, your burning spears don't damage you. That's you get a dominator. Way. If you got a dominator, it's 20% life steal. If you have 75 damage, which you will have if you have a dominator, because that's more than the 10 damage from the dominator plus, so, sorry, 20 damage from the dominator and your base damage you will not receive any damage from Burning Spears. Apparently I people are that... spamming is 15% instead of 10. Okay. Bruno, why you know everything? <sighs> Literally dead game. Dead game. I don't even know the percentages. Okay, it's even easier. So, buy a Mask of Death and you don't get Burning Spear damage. I think that's a big thing. That's a big thing. Okay, so... The only bad thing is that if you have life steal now, you can't force yourself into going into low HP. But, whatever. You could ult a creep if you want to get low HP. <laughs> yeah, I guess. It's a very bad use of your ult, but whatever. Uh, no, I actually think this is good. I honest, honestly think this is good. Not only because of that, um, but it also allows you to maybe other people to experiment with different attack modifiers. Like maybe Desolator Husker is good. I don't know, I never made Desolator Haskar, it seems stupid, but now it might be worth a try. I never made Diffusal Haskar, but hey, he attacks so fast when he's low HP, that maybe Diffusal burns through your mana really, really fast. Time for exploration. You know, I this feel like with, with the height of Centaur that he's in right now, like, if you look at Centaur, he's a hero that does a ton of magical damage, which Haskar mm -hmm. does not care about. Centaur yep. also relies a lot of his survivability based on high HP pool, which Haskar lately very good against yeah so i'm not saying huskar is a centaur counter but i'm just saying there are some spaces for huskar especially if you could catch the opponents in a draft where it's pretty much like magical based damage focus like i don't know with a yeah. puck and a crystal maiden with or shadow demon or something something like that has like a, ma a lot of magical damage and then you just say hey i'm gonna pick a huskar and see how things go so yeah okay i, I like it okay yeah, go ahead. Wrap, wrap that no, no, but no. I have something important. Yeah, go, go, Bruno. Okay, no, the thing is that I'm going to stop you right there. We're going to go back to Husker if you want. But one, going back to Gyrocopter, I want to point out someone that Chris M said on Twitter, and he's entirely right. Looking back to the gameplay bug fixes, fixed overhead indicator for Gyrocopter's homing missile showing for enemy players. So enemies don't see the big target in their head anymore. 
which is another buff for homing missile. It's, so, it's still going to be the same thing, though. Like, if you play up against a coordinated team, the second they see the missile, there'll be communication to attack it and get rid of it. Yeah, but do you know who it is it targeting? Like, if you don't have the damage to the point where someone has to run away and someone has to as, hit as the long missile... As, as long as you're looking at the tra trajectory and you're not all standing in a line together, yeah, you should be able to work it out. Maybe you don't see the missile in the middle of the team fight until it goes somewhere. I mean... Yeah, that, that might be possible. In the middle of a team fight, though, you're never going to be able to get your entire team to coordinate to attack it five times to right. get rid of the thing before it attacks you. I know I'm grasping at straws here, but I, I mean, it's another little buff. Um, it's good. That home, I, I think homing missile is the worst stun in the game, as it was at 680. I can't think of any stun that's worse than homing missile, even if it does for 140 damage. Because it's very easily countered. 681 homing missile? I don't think it's the worst. I think Techie anyway, Sun is pretty bad, but okay. Which one? Techie Sun? Amazing. Six second Techie Sun? Stasis Trap? Uh, it literally <laughs> is the best stun in the game, or worse, depending how you look at it. Yeah. Okay, okay so Invoker. Uh, Andy and I actually had a very interesting discussion about Invoker. Uh, he and I, or at least he says, Invoker is probably the best hero in the game because he's, his only weak stage is like level one to three where he doesn't have enough to do anything. But pretty much beyond that, especially if you exhort Invoker, you generally win your lane, you're helping out your team. You're basically like jack of many trades, but master of a lot as well. So. At the same time, I don't think he's so oppressively powerful that you do need to nerf him very heavily. And I personally don't think that his uh, Quas Wex build needs nerf. I think his Exor build needs nerf, but it seems like we're just nerfing the Wex portion of it. Mm hmm. Which, cool. I don't think it actually does much. I think Invoker will still get picked at the same rate that he's picked. But hey. Um. I don't know. I don't feel that Exhort Invoker is that much powerful than Quaswex. Um, I think that the thing about Quaswex is EMP burning potentially 550 mana hurts even late game so much that it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, you can say that, hey, okay, Sunstrike, especially something like um, DKD combined with a Centaur or combined with a Shadow Demon can deal a lot of damage in mid-game, uh, mid but I mean that was always the case and even before Quas Wex was buffed, Invoker you could do that and people didn't pick Invoker that much. So I don't know, like the EMP change actually feels kind of funny because even if it's a nerf, it feels more like okay now you will have to relearn the timing of Tornado, tornado EMP yeah, yeah. in order to land it properly. <laughs> Which is more annoying than an earth, but 2.6, 2.9, it's fine. Okay. Toby? Yeah. I, I'm just looking forward to getting to the next two support heroes, man. Okay, For me, cool. it, the, the Invoker change is a, eh, it happened, but he's still going to be a circumstantial hero for every game, so. Okay. No problem. Jikiro. Well, you have the room then, Toby. Go with your hero. <clears throat> man, I love this fucking hero. Right. This hero is amazing. And now you're going to give him. A huge freaking upgrade. Yeah, you give him a macro power duration of 14 seconds, and you increase the range as well by another 450. Just that in itself is awesome. Of course, you got the downside about if you can actually build an Aghanim Scepter on Jakira, like the Coddle thing later on, he can actually do it. But if Jakira can get to any kind of point where he can have an Aghanim Scepter, like, it's better to build, it's better to build an Aghanim Scepter than a Veil of Discord right now, judging by this, if you have enough lockdown control to go with the Jakiro. Like, I, I kind of almost want to see the return of, like, Jakiro and Enigma back into the, back into the cause again. Not to mention that he's, like, his laning presence has also been increased. Uh, with, like, I know it's Liquid Fire in level 4 is just reduced to 4 seconds, it doesn't seem like much, but it's bloody good when you're trying to push in the towers and trying to stop major heroes as well. And then earlier on, your dual breath range is now increased by an extra 50. So you actually use dual breath at the beginning, even though liquid fire is one of your most powerful things you've got at the start. 
because no mana cost, always cheap harassment. Uh, I, I just love the Jakiro. I just don't know if you can get an Aghanim Scepter up on him. Yeah, it seems I mean, like... He... Yeah, it seems like whenever we have a hero with, like, a cool new Axe Scepter, which, in this case, it's not. Like, it's just a, a really heavy upgrade with the Axe Scepter. So I'm talking about Skywrath Mage, when he came out with his Axe Scepter. I remember Omni Knight was a big hype. Uh, people talked about AA, Lion. And the people first tend to think about it's like, hey, can I now solo mid this hero? Can I just rush the stray axe and will it work? And I think time and time again we show that, or at least history show that, if they if the ult itself is not good enough it's without the axe, then it would not be picked just for the axe rush. Hey, so yeah, I mean it's amazing when you get that in your pup game, but when's the last time we ever seen Jakira with the axe in a pro game? In fact when's the last time we seen Jakira in a pro game? The well, only actually, team I knew that played it was um, basically was down there as MYM. Yeah, we well, actually saw it today. I think uh, Rock's Kiss picked it. I think or was it MMC? But it, it was today as well. But I don't think Axe Scepter will ever be purchased. Um, but never say never. I I think that it's really hard to farm an Axe Scepter on heroes that don't have any kind of burst damage, because Jakiro can clear the creep wave, but in a very meh way with Jewel Breath. He has literally no spell that does more than 100 damage in burst. So when you want like, a, okay, when we're going to get to Keeper of the Light. Keeper of the Light is a hero that, I mean, I'm not going to talk about that, but Keeper of the Light is a hero that can get an acceptor by himself, no matter whatever the circumstance. Jakiro, yeah. whatever problem he has, he won't be able to get there. So I find it hard unless you're stomping, and if you're stomping, go for an acceptor, go for a bail, whatever, it's going to be good anyways. Yeah, but it's funny pubs. Yeah, I, I think I think it's perfect that Jakiro and Keeper of the Light are so close together because they're just two prime examples. One hero that will be absolutely amazing if you can get an Aghanims, and one hero that can actually get an Aghanims. And yeah, we just so, ignore Juggernaut because his his change is shit. Well, it, it does make his ult do a little bit more damage, but yeah. Aside from that, mm. let's go from Keeper. Toby, you have the room again. Yeah, man. This this is a guy like you get permanent spirit form. Sorry, that's fucking buff as shit. You've got recall 100% of the time now. Um, and then during, during the um, uh, unobstructed vision and illuminate heals allies for 75% of the damage it actually ditches out, you've got a guy now that lets you actually breach high ground. Hey, imagine what happens now if you start putting Keeper of the Light and Abaddon together. This, this this buff is a big change. This is pushing Keeper back into the mix. Well, I already think, I think he's already kind of in the mix, right? Like Alliance picked him from time to time, and but they they, they still like they never really a hundred percent succeeded because of the Keeper. He never really had a, a primary role, and I'm not gonna say giving mana to someone is a primary role for a Keeper. Give mana, yo, man. Yeah, I mean now he gives mana and he gives HP. Yeah, he's a walking Which... medic. He's We're turning a... this game into Team Fortress too. He's a, yeah, he's a walking fountain. Um, uh, the unobstructed vision thing is pretty. Uh, but just like... Okay, so, blast from the past. Remember when Urn came? There's like the item was created? I remember playing Dota 1 back then, and people discovered, okay, all I need is an Urn, and I can just siege the enemy pretty much infinitely. Because I'm there, and I can take a fight, and I earned my teammates. I mean, you have to understand, there was nothing like that before, other than um, healing self. And people well, there was some like, thing called mech. Yeah, yeah, but mech had a cooldown, long cooldown. <laughs> you could pop earn and earn and earn. It was like, holy shit, this is so good because now, like, I can keep sieging. Even the light, like, earn times a million. The cooldown on um, the the horses is super low, so you can spam it. It's 375 heal every time. You don't have to stand there because, hey, you have permanent spirit form, so you're not even vulnerable during that. You go into a team fight. I mean, okay, this situation, right? You jump into a team fight against a team that has Keeper of the Light. You see the horses being channeled at you, or rather, towards that general direction. Before, you moved away from the horses, but now, like, what do you do? Like, if the everyone is kind of like half HP, you can move away and not take damage, but the enemy team is going to heal pretty much full health. 
So you have to disengage entirely. Um, you just can't fight against a team that has a Keeper of the Light. How does the heal actually fight? work? Like, what's the range on this heal? Because the, like, Illuminate flies a very, very long way. It's the same thing. If you get hit by the Illuminate and you're an ally, you get healed. Okay. You so, can't fight. You can't. So we, we could even just see Coddles just sitting back and saying, Hey, guys, need to heal up. Group up where I'm going to actually throw my Illuminate. And let's yes. get back in again. Yes. Which is what I was making the example with the urn. Holy shit. And it, so he, we're walking around with a Coddle who basically has a Night Stalker upgrade, Aghanim's upgrade. Except during the daytime. What happens when we have Night Stalker and then Keeper of the Light in the pill? Actually, no, that just counters each other because you can have Night Stalker's ultimate. Yeah. Um, but this, this is like Coddle. He's like the day version of Night Stalker. Except so much fucking better. Well, now Night Stalker counters Keeper of the Light. Bam. You see the horse is channeling, you pop darkness. Ha, you don't get healed. At the same time, Keeper of the Light still has the permanent Aghanim set, uh, the permanent ghost form uh, during, during Aghanim's, like, when he's got the Aghanim's up anyway, so it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. he's still giving me a recall, he's still giving me a blinding light, there's still no problem whatsoever. I'm just worried about Keeper of the Light finding the farm early enough to really utilize this, and that's why I kind of want to, like, toss up, like, I know we talked about Coral going into the jungle, but... And we talked about other offlaners, possibilities, but Keeper of the Light returning to the offlane. I know it's like a year ago since we saw that kind of thing, but I'm wondering if that's even possible now. I think, Toby, earlier when you are saying the Jakiro being able, unable to farm it, I just feel like when you have Keeper on the map and he's just not dying, I think he'll mm. just eventually get it. Because a lot of times when your mid-tower is being sieged or whatever, you just Keeper blast. Normally when a support hero takes a CS like that, you're like, wait, whoa, 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 that can't happen. But you're like, hey man, I'm defending a tower. And, and it's yeah. just, yeah. Like, so a lot of times, I think, especially when EGM plays Keeper, he just gets like hexes. So I think he'll definitely get it. But here's yeah. the thing though like, does this promote more like. Because you guys are saying the cool things, like, we're sieging a base, like, we're doing things, we're healing up. But this is just, does it more promote like Coddle PL? No. This, this for me actually promotes split push more than anything else. Because you have the constant recall? Constant recall, yeah. Bingo. Okay. So you, you, you could be throwing, like, like I don't know if you would you really say Nature's Prophet, but like, imagine being going to pull Abaddon back in during the middle of this fight and then throw him into the front lines while Keeper of the Light's healing him up while he's reflecting out other heals to the rest of your team. You've, you've, got, you've got an army of immortals which are going to be running into, into your base. That's what we're going to come down to right now. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I, I think Kado definitely will pick, be picked, and his acceptor will be bought simply because he can get farmed so safely and so easily. So, mm -hmm. Arke will be to, a happy man. Arke yeah. will be a very happy man. Yeah, insert every support player because like this also takes literally no skill, right? Like just sit behind. <laughs> yeah. no, oh wow, 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 wow! Okay. okay. Illuminate heals allies, not allied heroes. So it also heals your creep wave. <laughs> Holy hang on, hang on, hang on. Shit. So, if you actually had like an army of Nature's Prophet's trees, does it heal Necro units as well then? Yes, and I yes. want to give a shout out to Sean that mentioned that on Twitter. Holy shit. Literally dead game! But, but, then Earthshaker jumps in. No, Earthshaker's banned because that hero breaks game. You can't let right. him Right, exactly. Back. Okay. <laughs> Oh god, this is gonna start to hurt. Holy shit, this accent just seems better and better each time I read it. Yeah. Mm. This... I, I'm wondering now if Coddle is the new broken hero. It seems pretty strong to me. I'm not gonna say broken. Cause, I just don't you, like that word. You're but... throwing a consistent blinding light, so the enemy can't attack your heroes or your units, and you're healing everyone, including yourself too, because you're casting out Illuminate in permanent ghost form. So which you can means walk in. You never have to stay where you are when you throw the Illuminate, so you can walk into the effect of the Illuminate, or you can just keep throwing them out time and time again, and you never put yourself at risk as a support hero. Yep. Holy... <sighs> yep. Yeah. Coddle, hero, if you're looking for, like, compendium thing, most picked during the tournament.
If, if he remains Or the, banned. Or banned. Or banned. 100% so, involvement of Coddle from now on. I, I just went to look at like the uptime of Blinding Light. It's a 12 second cooldown with 5 second duration, so... I don't know, man. I, I think the whole permanent thing is actually... like I. Okay, I think it's fine to have everything here. Just a permanent fact is kind of too strong. I don't think Cuddle is ever going to give mana to everybody else because he'll need it himself every single time. <laughs> Not when you're getting Acceptor. You're getting a huge mana boost. Mm, and if you're ever you putting mana on yourself, you drop your Acceptor, you heal, and you pick it back up, like, you are good to go. So, I, I actually think he will still give mana to people. Hmm. Literally Gandalf, when he rolls from... Literally Gandalf. Okay. <laughs> OP shit. Okay. Move on. Okay. Alright, Kunka. Okay. Bigger Torrent. Good. Easier to hit. X marks the spot that can now can now last twice as long on Allied Hero. Um, which means that it lasts twice as long, but you can cancel it if you want. Okay. So here's the thing, unless something is fixed, and this might be fixed, people on the other team see X mark the spot on yourself or an ally. So I was thinking, huh, if you get like eight seconds of X mark the spot, you can do some cool Jukes, where the enemy has to choose whether to follow or like doesn't know that you're going somewhere and you have X, so they chase you for six, eight seconds, and then you go back and they you just run away because they're six seconds away from you. Um, but since the he enemy heroes actually see the X in the ground and like the the path that you're making when you're watching, it I don't think it really matters how long you have. You can't use this for juking at all. No, I think okay. The first thing that comes to mind is. For example, Xing yourself and then walking up to the Kree wave and attack. Like that, you always was able to do that. Now you could do it with a longer duration. Mm -hmm. You also could have used to do a lot of things like, for example, X revenge as she swaps somebody in. Like you could still. No, but you don't want that anymore. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that. Like, but it just gives you more. I'm thinking whether you could X an ally and do things like bot tricks. Like Butcher Travel to split push and X. R I'm not sure if that, I'm going I, too deep here. Well, I mean, if you have something like a Shadow Fiend, something that can clear, or a Keeper of the Light, uh, you could, like, have them TP, UX while the TP is about to end, they use their creep clearing spells, and then they come back. I think you could do that. No, I'm That's... talking about, like, late game, I have a bots on my Shadow Shaman, I see a tier 2 tower somewhere, I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna bots and drop wards, and you X me back, it's like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking too much about this. I, I'm just thinking bottle TP more than anything else. TP back to base, exit the last moment. Oh shit, Toby, you're a fucking god! And then come back out to the lane. But you can do that already. Literally Jesus. No, you get more healing because you don't... Literally you Jesus. You could actually put yourself to maximum life points. This, like, welcome to support Tinker actually working for once. Hey man, 100% win rate and scrims. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> That's what no, we said like, during that broadcast. Used, yeah, no, just to expand on what Toby said, you used to be able to refill your bottle and all that stuff, but like refilling the bottle versus being able to heal to full, especially during the late game, is a tif totally different thing. So, holy shit, boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the rest don't really matter, so let's move on. Mm hmm. Okay. Legion Commander still not in Captain mode, is she? No? No, but okay. Overwhelming gods, like, look at the difference in bonus damage per hero 14, 16, 18, 20 to 20, 35, 50, 65. That's huge. <laughs> like, you get. Look at this. Like, you get three heroes, it's 195 damage. You. Oh, overwhelming gods, press the attack yourself, go duel. What can stop you? Like, oh, here's the thing. Base. If you're dueling into five heroes, what could stop you is maybe the four heroes that are not being dueled. Um, your BKB. Okay, well then you're saying... I mean, no, 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 I, I'm not definitely... I'm not saying that this is not a big buff. Like, just to support that. You know Elder Titan? When you get a Spirits on a couple of people, his hammer hurts like fuck, right? Like, yeah. that happens. It's the same thing here. So, I, I think... A lot of people don't recognize how much damage it does, and now maybe they'll actually level the spell because the spell is actually really good. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I just don't think you could play it like okay. the way that you're suggesting. Di you can't ram. Different situation. Different situation. Forget the jewel. 
you're in a kind of like trial and versus trial and situation, or even like dual versus dual lane situation. Overwhelming odds, decent range. Even at level one, two, you just pop it on the two heroes on the dual lane, and bam, you have instant plus 40, plus 70 damage, which you will use to last hit pretty much everything in that way. Um, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. It, it's a really good buff. So, I mean, Legion Commander, when it came out, people were saying it was OP as fuck. Then there were some slight nerfs, and it went completely to the ground. I think it has like 45% win rate in pubs, and people yeah, don't but think pubs don't know how to play the hero. They jungle that, and they're like, hey guys. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, not anymore, because with this buff, you want to max overwhelming dots by level 7. Yeah. Anyways, Lashrak? Does this Lashrak? do anything? Um, what does it makes, actually do? Make Split Earth easier to hit, maybe, by yourself? If you Lightning Storm a target that's not like... You Lightning Storm something that's not the target... For half you want a second, though. Okay, hear me. Like, you. <laughs> hear you, you okay. slow. I, I had someone saying what the fuck I was talking about. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, so, Lightning Storm, something that's not the hero that you want to slow. And it bounces to that hero, and by that time you split her. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like, like a chasing spell to me, because how much it bounces and how far the bounces. Like, sure, you could, you could pick off one target, the heroes be behind that target get slowed down, so... That's how yep. I kind of see the application. I just think there's another buff to Lightning Storm. He already got buffed up in the last patch, you give him another buff up as well. It just promotes killing. That's all it really is. Killing with no escape. I could also see mid Lashrak coming back. Because when you went mid Lashrak, Lightning Storm is a thing. You can actually Lightning Storm your, the wave, and if it hits the other target, your hero will be able to move up and maybe put down a couple of harass. Hits. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I okay, you have to stop and watch this. Um, no, no, okay. I, someone showed me like a bug that is already in the game and it's hilarious. But I'm going to not this, show this it until... The, this is the Dota 2 6.81. I mean, yeah, oh, you can just link it to me. Upgrade. Okay, it's okay. Upgrade. I'm, 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 you I'm can link it to me and Skype. I'll put, put it on so people on the stream can Yeah, see. but like, <laughs> let's talk about Leech because this is actually relevant to Leech. <laughs> You saw that? Well, welcome to Disruptors and that brand new friend as well, though. <laughs> Lich is so like if you can hold him there. Well done, Lich. But how many times do you see Lich get his maximum bounces on an ultimate? Okay, the did you see that, Lumi? Yes. <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Is that yeah, just no, one no. chain frost? That can't be one chain frost. Somebody just double chain frost. Now, 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 I know, no, 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 no. I, I know that. I, I know it bounces infinite times, but it seems like it's just bouncing way too quickly. Or is that just how fast it bounces? Holy fuck! They all just. Oh no! No, 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 no. There's one. like tw ten of them in there. Yeah, there's more than one, but it doesn't matter. Like even if it's only one. Like if it gets you there, you're kind of dead. But you, okay. you still need to lock the heroes in position long enough for a full bounce. I don't see this changing much, and I don't see Agadim Scepter really ever being purchased on Lich anyway. Yeah, let's talk about the Frost Armor first. Because yeah. when yeah, I saw that's, this, that's I was cool. like, Frost Armor, Living Armor, Jesus <laughs> Christ, how do you ever take down a tower? <laughs> and then you put a Kodo on top of that? Good luck. <laughs> 661B, uh, Illuminate also heals towers. <laughs> Lich and Coddle now become the new greatest offlane combo. <laughs> well, no, here's the thing though, I feel that, I feel that Lich as well as Treen uh, is already very pickable hero. I think Treen is not exactly a counter to Lycan, but a hero that does very well to Lycan. Same thing with Frost Armor, so... And Lich is already a very pickable hero because of his laning ability. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lich was already getting popular enough working with Centaur in the offline. Yeah, why even buff this hero? Hero doesn't need buff. I think it sounded like a cool feature. Hey, let's do more stuff to buildings. Frost Armor is one of those stuff. I just wait for the, uh, the Lich and Tree combination to be picked up, 
and then for it to be fully punished by this never-ending ball of light of life coming from Coddle and Abaddon and everybody else on the front lines. No, it I'm actually okay with that. matters a lot, especially for Lich offlane, because offlane is generally the first tower you lose, right? Because mm -hmm. the yeah. picks up and suddenly you're putting three armor, and it's not only three armor, it's three armor that slows the enemy attack. Like, that drastically cuts down the pushing speed. So yep. this is actually much, much bigger than what people just thinking, oh, three armor. So, or is it two armor? But I, the slow is actually a big deal. And then you have the whole low Z acceptor, which, yeah. you know, nice pop game. Yeah, I, I mean, realistically, in pro games, this change will have more of an impact than the acceptor change. Uh, change. But both are really good. Um, I, I just like, you pick Lycan, I, I'm not going to say I insta pick Leech, but I have him in my hand of things that can damage a Lycan, because he won't be able to push as fast. Um, health building, which is good. Alright. Um, I'm expecting nerf on Lich Frost armor the next patch. <laughs> I agree as well. Alright, Lina, attack range, acceptor. The Ag Scepter is the crazy thing. It seems like BKB is now a useless item. Lots of things go through BKB now. Yep. When um, you're able to Laguna Blade through Magic Immunity... I don't know. Uh, I think it's just cool to have one hero in the game being able to do that. Like, hey, I do magic over damage, but forget your BKB. Oh, shit. That's why, uh, Bruno, if you remember the patch lock we wrote, we, we yep. gave that to uh, Skywrath Mage, right? To Skywrath Mage, yeah. yeah. So ding, Which... ding, and a half. And a half. Yeah. So it's just like, whatever. I'm, I'm just confused about the 670 range. Like, does she really need 20 more range? I guess because her a animation is so bad that you just want to compensate her a little bit. Maybe, maybe just like to make Fiery Soul a little bit more useful just because you'll stand there and attack. So it's probably one more attack that you can make if the enemy goes out of range. Like, I actually already see her being pretty good, especially when you pick her next to Luna, for example. Like, if you do, like, Luna, Lina, the Luna aura gives her, you know, pretty decent plus 14 and level 1. Like, you harass pretty effectively now, and then you add an A on top of that, if that's what you care for. I'm yeah, but do like you see her picked? Out. What? Do you see her picked now? Like, uh, I, I, saw, I, I, I didn't see her much. Yeah, today I Mono picked Mania picked tonight. her. Yeah, against VP. <laughs> okay. It's just she, like, she she works with with the right combo heroes and with the extra range you can at least have like some kind of potential to harass out heroes like with like centaur without bringing yourself in such a close range that you'd die straight away. Um, but yeah, Agadim Septilina has very rarely happened in the past, mm -hmm. so it probably won't again happen in the future. Another Agadim's upgrade, which is interesting, but would take some he time. You can farm it. No, she, she, like, she definitely can. Like the, the new the new kitchen of slave as well as light strike array is wonderful. You can nuke down entire creep wave and force force out the lanes really quickly. But the chance of you being able to go out that far and do that kind of stuff is is a lot lower in the current meta. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. This... I mean, look, if you say Lena, okay, we're saying keeper could farm it because a lot of times when the wave gets shoved to your tower. You can stand really far back and farm it safely. Lina, especially with Light Strike Array, has a very, very short range, at least compared to Illuminate. So the safety factor is not there. And also, mm -hmm. obviously, Keeper could sustain himself, whereas Lina cannot. So technically, Lina, yes, she could farm it. Realistically, yep. I don't think she'll be able to. Mm. So Hex gets better. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, this is uh, Hex level 4 is 4 seconds. I don't know if you remember that, but it's four so, seconds. On a 12 second cooldown, you can have 53%. Um, yeah. Pretty you have game. it up. Yeah, 33% of the time you can have a guy hex it, which is a lot. Yeah. Like cool. this, four second cooldown would make this completely ridiculous. Eight seconds would make it super powerful. 12 seconds is very, very, very good for it. So, big love there. It's not a 3 second cooldown, it's going from 25% uh, uh, up, what's the word for that? Like, uptime. you can keep it up. Uptime, yeah. thank you. 25% yeah. up, uh, uptime to 33%, which makes a difference. Okay. okay. Uh, Lone Tree gets uh, more HP regeneration on his bear, which makes more sense. 
Yeah, it made sense. Makes sense. Which I think like it seems like a very small increase, especially how much HP the bear has. But it actually does matter, especially a lot of times in the old bear games. Like remember yeah. how uh, when armlet worked on the bear, like that was a big part, right? Being able to regen your bear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he innately gets it. So maybe we'll ask Bulldog about this one, but I, I definitely think your siege gets better now. This, this made the ability to actually pull the lanes early on even more effective, because I know we used to see like poor man shields and a, and a set of tangos on the bear, so he'd actually have the regeneration so he could keep pulling without losing that bear. Does that yeah. make it even harder to stop that type of pull for, in the future? Yeah. Mm. I mean, I think with the off lane, now that it meets the creep wave up, pulling is not even necessary anymore but yeah sure if he yeah. if he does pull it he, he gets the more region yeah sorry i also noticed it was just like it's a straight flat two at the front yeah. anyway so it doesn't change the start of the game so yeah. Yeah. take back what i say as i read more okay yeah. so luna uh lost four damage but i just want to say that even though she got nerfed i actually think that she's one of the winner of this patch because i don't think she was nerfed enough no, right, no, not at all. Right now, I think because she has such high movement speed and the fact that she gives her entire team damage, something I talked about earlier is the ability to give your team to run into the enemy jungle and drop down enemy early wards. For example, if you're dealing against a Chen or Enchantress, that's a really, really big deal. Yep. Uh, and, her, and her night vision is also another kind of big thing, especially if you're doing night ganks. So yep. I, I don't think this nerf is enough because she's actually a really strong hero. So I think she won the patch, quote-unquote. Uh, despite being nerfed. When you only lose 4 damage, but you have the potential of giving 14 damage to 3 heroes in your tri lane, the 4 damage means nothing. Yeah. And let's not even talk about the 0.5 point of armor and 4% attack speed, because that's even less than nothing. So, the other thing is losing the 4 attack speed as well as uh, half of armor, but does it really matter? I don't know. Nope. So. Yeah. nope. No. She'll still do, the, still do the same job she's always done. I guessed it too. Okay, so Lycan, uh, Shapeshift no longer give the bonus health. I think when you're running away from a gank, it's not really the bonus HP that gets you away. It's the flat MS. So I don't think he'll die necessarily because of that. I think this affects more in like man fights, which does actually matter because we do see a lot of Lycans, for example, being able to survive just But in man enough. fights, he's going to have Abaddon and Coddle, so he's fine. <laughs> yeah, the other thing that... It's not explicit a Lycan nerf, but it is actually an explicit Lycan nerf. It's the Necrobot nerfs. Yeah, we're going to talk about that later. Yeah, but I think Lycan is actually sufficiently nerfed uh, with Shapeshift as well as the Necrobot being hit. Yep. So. This Magnus being Jedi. nerfed. Ding, ding, er, sorry, ding, 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 ding. No, no maximum, maximum, maximum target leaming. Yeah. How Fourth. Many are we? Fourth ones? Are we really yeah. that good? Four. Okay. Yeah, we're that good. Okay. And then skier range got better. Great. Good. Yep. Moving on? The, yeah, the maximum target limit made a lot of sense. Yeah. Now you so, can do your yeah. five man RP, five man skewer. Yeah. That's good. Anyways, Medusa. Split shot. I swear at some point split shot was like this. Like a long time ago. But I'm not entirely sure. I actually do remember that too. Okay. But so I'm not know. crazy. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is the question. Is this a buff or a nerf? You mean split shot? Especially the early levels? Yeah. I mean, if you look at this, it's like, in terms of DPS, it's 250% of your damage distributed on 5, compared to 160, uh, level 1, 160% uh, percent of your damage. So in terms of damage output, it's a nerf. At the early but levels. At the other levels, yes. And the le le like level four is the same. In both at the same time, if you if you can control how many units are in front of you, how many units you're attacking at, then it's a buff because you're putting the damage where you where you want it to be and not just spread out across a creep wave. Yeah. So okay, here's the other thing. It's like if you're at if you're doing Medusa Ancients, which you shouldn't do because it sucks. But if you were doing Medusa Ancients, this is a nerf. Uh, and you're no no, this is a buff. Is it? Oh, well, the thing is. You're normally attacking about three creeps at the same time, like especially at the beginning. Because you're never attacking, attacking five, is that your point? 
Yeah, so okay, if you're attacking enough. three, you're doing 150%. If you're attacking two with 80%, you're doing 160%. Okay, so you're killing ancients faster. I, I see but. your point, Bruno, but can we not wrap the discussion around Medusa ancients? Because that should never actually exist. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> like, a bad it thing. Just, okay, the way I see this is it's a nerf when you're farming. Because let's be honest, you're not getting split shot till like level 14 or 12 or whatever, like after you match your other spells. So it's more of a like late game thing. And I think when yeah. you're hitting 13, 14, 15, you have ideally one or two damage items and you just want to max split shot asap so in that sense i actually is think i think it's actually the nerf because of the uh the less percentage damage you're dishing out because you're you just want to get to 16 17 18 as soon as possible and you want to just hit as many creeps as possible right so based on the brutal right. map that you, you pointed out you are dealing less damage now yep. in terms of a team fight well i, I actually will want to take the 80 percent in two, three, four, or five targets, but Medusa, is she? Do you want to fight more or you want to farm more? I guess it just comes down to that. Uh, with the new mana shield absorption uh, buff, she can fight much earlier because level one is no better than previous level two, and level two is pretty much equal to previous level three. Uh, some people, most people, don't want to fight with Medusa until they have level three or four of mana shield because otherwise you're too squishy. Also, it matches the time where you start getting those ultimate ores and start getting generally tankier. Um, but this change also means that Medusa can fight earlier if she wants to. Yep. Cool.